What's up, Diecast Collectors? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and today, pretty special video, guys. As you guys know, the Rolex 24 is literally about to literally come up very quickly, and we're going to be talking about a guy who is looking to be a favorite for this year's Rolex 24. A lot of NASCAR fans are going to know who this guy is. It is the guy who just recently retired in NASCAR, Mr. 7-time champion himself, Jimmy Johnson is 2020 uh, Ally White, or I'm sorry, the proper term to say this is is a rally car because he had to rally his way into the playoffs. Um, but yeah, well, we'll talk about that in a second, guys. But what a beautiful diecast this is, guys. Um, this is actually the first time you can get this car because the Gold Series variant ha is not has not been released yet, guys. As far as I know, depending on how long uh, how long. Uh, this upload is going to be, or more importantly, when I'm going to upload it, it's probably going to be a few days before the Rolex 24, because, you know, Jimmy Johnson is going to be a hot driver to be talking about during that race. Um, of course, I will actually be cheering for this guy, because, you know, my boy Simon Pagano will be driving with him, so probably the only time you will ever see me cheer for Jimmy Johnson. This is coming from a guy who wasn't really the biggest Johnson fan back then, but hey, things have to come full circle for a reason, am I right? But what a beautiful diecast this is right here, guys. Um, I still love all you Jimmy Johnson fans out there. Don't, you know, don't hate me that I just said that, but you know, you live and learn with some of the mistakes you make in the past, so. <laughs> I mean, I was an Edwards fan, so I had every reason to be, you know, a Jimmy Johnson hater. <laughs> but, my God, beautiful diecast we got right here. And there's the rest of uh, Wave 8 that you can guys get at your Walmarts. And I believe Targets have them as well. By the way, still got to look for these two sons of bitches right here. So I'll be on the lookout for those very soon. Um, look out, scalpers. Here I come. But speaking of that, let's go and kick off this diecast review and the official unboxing of the Jimmy Johnson 2020 Rally Car. Alrighty, guys. We got this diecast out of the box. And before, wait a minute. What the hell just happened to this car? Did this thing got tossed in a demolition derby? What on earth? earth oh god lionel screwed up the white on this too look at this shit man this thing looks like it got wrecked at daytona oh my god what the fuck lionel well before we get to this mess in a second let's go and look at the little accessory because i'm assuming this is probably gonna be the most pleasing thing to look at but look at that man look at that this nice high quality magnets that you can put up on your fridge and look at that the white is beautiful uh the yellow is a little dull but you know i never usually see day glow magnets in my life if i do then you know i will be living as a happy motherfucker if you know what i mean but yeah you got ally jimmy johnson's very cool iconic signature hen murder sports number 48 but heck we know who's going to be driving the 48 car this year, which, you know, a lot of people got a lot of mixed feelings about that, but we'll see how it goes. I'm optimistic about Bowman, but let's go back to this diecast, guys. What was supposed to be a beautiful looking diecast, it is. Unfortunately, this is probably $5, actually, this is probably like $3 quality right here. I cannot stress this enough with Lionel, man. It is bad when you screw up a popular driver's diecast. They did it with Chase Elliott cars with the metallic finish. How on earth you are a company that has made trains for fuck's sakes for many fucking decades. And this is now what, like your 10th or 11th year making NASCAR diecast? How is this even legitly possible? I mean, does this thing literally got into the conveyor belt and just like, I literally cannot describe how baffling this is. I mean, how can some people support this and be like, it's not a big deal. It's a toy car. I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't consider you a true diecast collector and you think this is acceptable. I'm sorry. That is just my opinion, guys. All right. I have my entitlement to have an opinion because this is probably by far the worst decal job I've seen by far on an NASCAR Authentics car. I mean, this is pretty bad. There is paint chips everywhere. There's a nice black mark right there. Looks like they were trying to cover that up, but my God. I mean, I love the paint scheme. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's basically his ally scheme, but instead of the black, it's white. I mean, but we'll talk about the 2021 one when that comes out because that thing is beauty. But uh, the hood, I mean, of course, you know, that's basically what it else, uh, what a freaking acid trip looks like, you know. Shoo! I know they're trying to represent, you know, the ally logo is racing fast like the car. Woo! Yeah, nice try. But heck. Speaking of that, what the hell's going on with that 48? That thing looks like a fucking knockoff 48 that you can find a Dollar Tree. I mean, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, what on earth? Lionel, man. Woo, they really butchered this car. Luckily, this side doesn't look too bad. Oh, God, that is even worse. Holy crap, they tried covering that shit up again with, with this, like, paint or Sharpie. What the fuck, Lionel? <laughs> 
<laughs> and look at that B pillar. Oh god, it's overlapping like a fucking uh like like a fucking um like a fucking pillar falling off of a building. Like Jesus, dude. God. Uh, I think the Ally logo looks okay. I mean, uh, well, you know, it, it's kind of overlapping a little bit into the wheel weld, but, and you know. But at least the white looks a little more better. I mean, it looks a little more complete and compared to that driver's side. I'm pretty afraid to show that show you guys that driver's side again because that is pretty damn abysmal. Another paint chip right there, but I guess uh, that's something that I know. Couldn't Sharpie right there. I don't know why, but I guess I'll do the job. And... Oh, God, what, where's the Camaro logo? What? Is there supposed to be a Camaro logo right there? Yeah, there is. Not only the Camaro logo is missing, but the ZL1 and 1LE logos are missing, too. Are you freaking kidding me, dude? <laughs> I have never seen that before. This diecast is literally missing a decal. The Camaro decal. So when you when you draft uh, when you draft the some bitch you're gonna be like oh what manufacturer he drives if you clearly can't see the bow tie right there some people are gonna mistake in I don't know you're probably driving a fucking Ford for all I care but no there's no Camaro logo oh my god this is bad <laughs> this sucks because you know I really wanted to give some love with this Jimmy Johnson car because this is actually a really cool looking paint scheme unfortunately unfortunately I got too overexcited on this car and my what's the source video. I forgot to realize that this diecast is screwed up to shit. And I mean that for a reason, guys. I mean, look at this thing. This thing literally looks like it's already been played with. I mean, holy shit. Oh, my God. I wouldn't even get $5 for this thing. I'd probably already throw it in the freaking clearance bins for like 99 cents. God damn, dude. <laughs> um, But back, I mean, I hope you guys are doing a nice little mini rant because this is not a rant review, but heck... That's why you guys gotta watch my videos, because sometimes I'll surprise you. By the way, nice uh, decal chipping right there. I mean, brilliant job. This is what it's supposed to look like, not this. So, I might get another one, because this is just freaking bad, man. I mean, oh my god. But, with all that aside, guys, actually, I'm gonna show the other side, because I can't stand looking at that side. I apologize, but I can't show you that side, because otherwise I'm gonna get so distracted looking at that crap. God, that thing is crap. Not the driver, not the paint scheme, just the quality. It's crap. All right. <laughs> oh, Lord. Might as well call this a rant review because I'm already in a ranting mood right now. So, hope you guys are enjoying this shit. <laughs> oh, Lord. But yeah, Jimmy Johnson drove this car for, what, like five or six races? I think six races. I don't know. Um, because... A lot that I, I guess I don't know the superstition was, you know, if you have black on your car, you're going to run bad. Um, seems like that's the superstition that Johnson's been living in the last three, his last three full time years in NASCAR. I mean, God bless him. I mean, good Lord. I mean, <laughs> um, and, and Truex did the same thing too, switching to black numbers to white numbers. And I think even Christian Eckes, I think, drove a white, uh, a white 18 truck instead of black. So, you know, we saw a lot of black schemes going white. And, Sadly, it didn't really do much. Really didn't. I mean, Jimmy Johnson still did not advance off to the playoffs. And I will tell you what, guys. Jimmy Johnson, this car right here, I mean, he first drove this car at the Daytona Road Course. That's why it's called the Rally Car, because he ran this at the Road Course. Maybe that's what the R stands for. But he was trying to rally his way up to the playoffs. God, that is a stupid pun. That, that God, I mean, who came up with that pun? Your dad? <laughs> Good Lord. But, um, hey, guilty as charged, though. Am I right? But, yeah, um, everybody remembers this car. Not from the road course race. They remember this from um, from the um, what was it? The um, the the the, the freaking Daytona Night Race, right? The Daytona Night Race, because <laughs> Jimmy Johnson, man, was literally on his way to go for his eighth title. Literally, he was. And then, well, like two to three laps to go, he got involved in an eleven car pileup. Now it wasn't over for him. He ended up finishing seventeenth, but sadly. That sucked, because he had such a good run. I think he was going to be a front runner, and possibly, I thought he was going to win the damn race. Now, I said before, early in this video, I was the biggest Jimmy Johnson fan. But I will tell you what, everyone their own goddamn mother would have been crying and cheering for Jimmy Johnson if he won that Daytona race, because this guy has had shit luck, and it's a shame that, you know, what's happened, but my God, guys, hopefully he can rebound and win the Rollers 24. That'd be pretty damn cool, to be honest with you guys. I mean, some people... Might want to see that. Some people don't really want to. I wouldn't mind it. I mean, and plus, with Jimmy Johnson coming to IndyCar as well, part-time for Chip Ganassi, I don't expect him to win right off the bat, but he's going to learn very quickly. And when he does, that's going to be interesting to see. All right. But yeah, Jimmy Johnson, 
unfortunately missed the playoffs because William Byron they finished 17th. Uh, William Byron, of course, won the race, and Matt Benno finished 12th. And those are the last two final playoff spots. And yeah, Jimmy Johnson just, you know, was so close, and he never gave up, even though his car was literally in the demolition derby after that race. But he still continued on with the race, even though his car was in limbo mode. But can't blame him enough, guys, for, you know, gi giving him a, a good E for effort. But let's get on to the diecast comparison, guys. Here's his original Ally car from 2020, the black variant, which has a lot more better quality. A lot more better quality. Now, usually I would say the white looks better, but to be honest with you guys, I don't know. I'm kind of digging the black. I'm kind of digging the black. I mean, I do like how the number is. I think the number is a little too big on the black variant. On the white variant, it looks great. It looks really good, and it has a nice. It has that classic 48 font. That's uh, it does uh, the, with the with this 48. It doesn't have that outline to it, which just it looks cool. But you know, this this more looks like a Jimmy Johnson scheme. All right. I mean, I'm kind of getting some 20, 2014 vibes. By the way, look at that horrible suspension right there. Look at that. Oh my god. <laughs> That is some bad suspension work right there. Look at that shit, man. Oh, my God. This thing can't even stand properly on its own four tires. <laughs> oh, God. But you can see what I mean, guys. Yeah, that car is missing a shitload of logos. And look at that. that. Working chassis. Gotta love that. Anyways, I'm getting pretty pissed off looking at this car now. So, I'm going to have to go ahead and end it right here. And, uh, yeah. But, definitely, if you end up getting this car... Find a better quality version because I literally got the shit in the stick on this one. It was the only one they had, so there was no excuses saying, oh, you should have got some others. It was the only one they had, so whatever. Anyways, guys, it's been OBB, the Diecast News Guy. Thank you so much for so watching uh, this, uh, I guess you could say, rant review with Jimmy Johnson's 2020 Rally, a Chevrolet Camaro Z01 one lead for Iron Motorsports. Just kidding, it's not a rant review, but it is pretty damn close to it. <laughs> so I hope you guys were entertained by it. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you guys next time on hopefully on a more proper NASCAR Nightcast review. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later.